What's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Hope everybody's having a great day. It is Monday, and so I hope you guys tune into our live stream, of course, tonight, 9 o'clock Eastern, and we'll be talking about everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. And of course, there's always so much drama. Even when there's nothing going on, there's always something going on. Um, I hope you also check out at four o'clock, we'll be doing a premiere of our uh, Tom Beebe interview uh, that I did actually last night, uh, the father of uh, Cooper Beebe. And I can't wait to share that with you guys, but we'll do it as a premiere at four o'clock Eastern. So here is where things kind of get crazy to me. Um, I've talked about the Mike McCarthy situation where everybody is now running with, um, Mike McCarthy is fed up and you know, the Cowboys, uh, what are they doing? And everybody of course is just like, you know, the Cowboys are making this mistake, this mistake, this mistake and all that. And it's real easy to be a Monday morning quarterback, so to speak. Um, and it's easy to criticize. Um, but we're trying to change the Cowboys, what they do, and they have a f way of doing business that they feel has got them where they are right now. Is that the right way? I don't know, but here's the bottom line. When you have the most valuable franchise and um, you own it, you can do it however you want to. But here's the thing that's kind of funny to me is where they go through um, the talking heads and stuff, and, you know, they always have this conversation. And I'm trying to understand how they don't get the basics right. Because this is on Colin Cowherd's show here, and they're talking to Albert Breer, who is an NFL uh, guy who's been covering the NFL now for since 2005. He keeps talking about how the Dak Prescott franchise tag would be $80 million for twenty five. Dak has a no-trade clause and has a no-franchise tag clause in his deal. And he becomes a free agent beginning of the league year. You can't franchise tag him, but yet they still continue to go through. So I want to play this so we can just kind of carry on and, you know, see exactly what they're trying to talk about, and we'll critique it. Since I used to go to the NFL Combine back in the day, one of the best NFL reporters in the business, Albert Breer, joining the show, senior reporter, lead content strategist. You're a strategist now, MMQB. What's well, up, man? How are you? I can't you? believe you're talking about that. Like, that was, like, that long ago, was Bro, it, that you were at the Combine? It was, like, 15 was years ago, maybe, ago? like, 12 years ago. Oh, my God. Don't tell me that. You should see Breer. You guys should see it's been Breer. 12 years since that? It's been a long time. You should see him operate at the Combine. You know, we're just at a, at some bar. What's the bar called, the popular one? Uh, well, you're probably talking about Prime, I would think, right? Yeah, Prime. Steakhouse. So we're, we're hanging out at the Steakhouse bar. It's packed. And just people coming up left and right to talk to Breer. And I'm just mm -hmm. standing there like some dopey internet guy. Well, um, and just watching Breer, I'm like, this guy knows everybody. So you're so plugged in on the NFL what do you make of this story this morning that uh, Jerry Jones and McCarthy kind of at odds? McCarthy clearly wants a new deal. He is now reportedly fed up with Jerry Jones, who said they were going to go all in, but they haven't done jack squat to improve the roster. McCarthy probably wants a deal. What do you what are you hearing, Albert? Well, I look at this on two levels, right? Like the first level is the team level, and they've got a lot going on right now. Mm -hmm. You know, with the Dak situation, with Justin Jefferson, or the uh, – the CD Lamb. Lamb situation, the Michael Parsons situation, Justin Jefferson's deal hits them on two of those fronts because it's going to affect the Parsons negotiation. It's going to affect the Lamb negotiation. Mm. And then, you know, you got the Dak Prescott thing, which, you know, Big. now you're looking at going into a contract year with your quarterback and you really don't have the franchise tag available to him because he would cost over $80 million to tag in 2025. Okay. So l l let me be clear here. Let me be clear here. You cannot, you cannot franchise tag him unless he says, hey, I waive my franchise tag. Do you think he's going to waive his franchise tag when he knows he can go out in the market 
and get as much as he wants. And and this is where it's kind of crazy because I see, you know, all these trade Dak Prescott in the middle of the season because the Cowboys are going to be, of course, ass-ass. And, of course, Dak will waive his no-trade clause to go to a contender. I don't see any of these scenarios happening. If the season happens to go south, which, you know, unless Dak Prescott gets injured, we haven't seen them go south, okay? But let's listen a little longer because I, I, I still, it's like, how is it you guys keep saying the same thing? And this is not the first time I've heard them say this. It's like, don't you know? So you've got all those, um, all those loose ends, and now, of course, you've got your, your coach and most of, most of his staff, too, um, heading into a year where they're, um, where their contracts are going to be up. And so on the team level, there's just a lot happening there. Individually for Mike McCarthy, it's hard to blame him, j Mac. <laughs> He's won 12 games three years in a row. Um, but this is sort of a product of the noise that he had to deal with at the end of last year in November and December when you asked around to people who know these things and who run in these circles, what you kept hearing was, just a playoff berth won't save Mike McCarthy. He's got to get in and he's got to look good in the playoffs. Haven't we that said that every year? Of course. You know, they looked bad um, in losing to the Packers. And so, you know, they, they wind up holding on to him, but that was after a few days of deliberations. And so, you know, certainly, you know, on one hand, you got somebody who is, you know, dealing with a team that's got a lot of loose ends, that's got a lot of high expectations that may be reaching the end of a window for a certain group of players. And then on the other end, you have a coach who is sitting here having won 12 games three years in a row, who's got a Super Bowl champion pedigree, who's now won with two different franchises, um, set to head into a contract year. It doesn't surprise me that things would be a little uncomfortable. I'm trying to build a case where you would trade C.D. Lamb for some type of Herschel Walker type package. But the problem is you have to pay Lamb big time. I don't mm-hmm. know if any team, uh, Indianapolis Colts, I, I don't know who has the quarterback on the rookie deal that would take that roll of the dice. So then it's like, well, if you can't trade Lamp, do you trade Parsons? And by the way, I looked up Parsons' playoff stats. He hasn't done anything. Yeah. He's in total non-factor in playoff games, mm-hmm. dominates the regular season. Is there a world where they explore trading one of those two, Parsons or Lamp? Well, I don't I don't think that they're going to sit there and make phone calls, but like what, what could happen is if either of these situations get ugly when we get to training camp, um, what, it, what 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 inevitably winds up happening is phone calls get made, you know, and incoming phone calls for mm. the Cowboys, right? Mm-hmm. Like, so they don't need to shop C.D. Lamb or Micah Parsons. Um, they can sit there and wait for calls to get in if those situations get ugly. And, you know, obviously both those guys play premium positions. You know, C.D. Lamb plays a position that now – has the highest paid non-quarterback. Again, that's Justin Jefferson. And uh, Micah Parsons plays a position that has the guy who was in that seat until just about a month ago, and that's Nick Bosa. So Mm -hmm. uh, both those guys are expected to to, to get contracts over $35 million a year. And, you know, if the Cowboys aren't willing to go there now and they rattle cages, what's going to end up happening is teams are going to start to sniff around and see if there's some availability there. So... I, you know, I, I think if if these things aren't settled by the time we get to the first week, second week of August, if one or two of the one 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 of those guys or the other one doesn't wind up coming to training camp, well, you know, the, naturally the phone they calls will. start coming in, and then if you're the Cowboys, without even shopping the guys, you've got some things to consider. So, mm. uh, okay, let's be clear here. Um, C.D. Lamb would be missing a million dollars per game. A million dollars per game, and I doubt he's going to do that. Micah Parsons wouldn't be as much per game, but you were actually devaluing yourself on that. And the fines, of course, are non-refundable. So there's a lot of misinformation that comes out when you are listening to some of the stuff, and misconceptions will happen. And I've pointed out a couple of times how we've gone through with the whole Mike McCarthy is – you know, at odds, Mike McPart. You know, and, and I think this is, again, a product of there's nothing going on right now. It is the dead time. So, there you have it. That's my take on all of it, and it's it is what it is. See you guys at four o'clock. <laughs>